In today's episode of Space Base News, the Starship SN8 completes the first ever Triple Raptor static fire, and Nokia is about to build 4G network right on the moon. My name is Radim, and welcome to the Space Base News. SpaceX's Starship SN8 fired up its three Raptor engines for the very first time. It's not always that easy to keep up with such a fast-paced test campaign such as the Starship one. Just three days ago, I released an episode covering recent Starship news, talking about how the vehicle was moving from cryoproof testing phase to the next crucial stage of trials, the Raptor engine tests. And just as I was about to finish recording that night, the firing of the pre-burner just happened right behind my back on La Padre's livestream without me even knowing noticing that. We were expecting the static fire to take a place for several days as new road closure alerts were announced for October 18, 19 and 20. However, we couldn't be so sure whether SpaceX plans to move directly into the static fire or if there is gonna be separate pre-burner test first. So finally, on Monday morning at 6 am local time, we had an ignition. It was small and short one, which implicated it was pre-burner test, but it wasn't 100% clear. It could also be spin prime, or maybe even aborted static fire attempt. But the bottom line is, well, nothing blew up, so we can certainly call it success and a step forward. Now you may ask, what exactly is the pre-burner? Well, we call it pre-burner test because the purpose is to make sure that the two small pre-burner combustion chambers are good to go before the full duration static firing is performed. Each Raptor engine has two smaller pre-burner engines and those drive the turbo pumps. One is for methane fuel and the other one is for liquid oxygen. And those turbo pumps pumps the fuel into the pre-burners. And if that sounds confusing, that's because it is. At least for me. I mean, it's rocket science after all. Raptor engine is incredibly complicated beast and unfortunately I can't go into details in this video. But what really helped me to understand Raptor a little bit more was Everyday Astronaut's amazing 50 minute video where he really dives deep into it. So I'll leave the link for you in the description. The next testing opportunity was scheduled for the following day. And we still didn't have a clue whether we gonna see another pre-burner test or if SpaceX team decided to move on to the actual static fire. Around 3 am on Tuesday morning, there was a usual siren warning first, which made a lot of us who were watching live streams pumped up and around 10 minutes later we finally saw an unusually bright giant fireball and a couple of seconds later the roaring of three Raptor engines firing at once for the first time ever. There was no doubt this was the first static fire test we were all hoping for. It marked the completion of one of the most important milestones that Starship SN8 needs to pass before the ultimate goal, the 15 km flight. Elon Musk later confirmed on Twitter that the test went well, so now we expect at least one more static firing. However, this time the Starship is finally gonna be in all of its beauty with the nose cone attached. And we have very good news even in this department. Forward flaps has already been attached and as you can see in this comparison picture, it looks so much more mature and refined than the old implementation on the Starship MK1 last year. And not long after that, the nose cone has been lifted up and finally stacked atop the fairing section, so it appears we are almost there. Everything seems ready for the last step, completion of the Starship SN8. It's gonna be the first time we're gonna see completed Starship vehicles since MK1 was stacked last year, but this time, this time it's gonna be truly fly-ready suborbital spacecraft. Many of us expected that SpaceX is gonna take cautious approach and it's gonna take some time, maybe a week, before we see the mounting, but it turned out pretty quickly that's not gonna be the case. Michael Baylor tweeted that interesting road closures were announced, including several atypical testing opportunities. The 9 pm to 6 am windows are usually reserved for static fire attempts, but the other time frames, 7 to 12 and 3 to 5 pm windows, scheduled for October 21st, were indicating that maybe, just maybe, SpaceX planned to use this opportunity for moving the nose cone to the pad for the actual mating. And as Elon later confirmed success for static fire, he also wrote that the next step is really gonna be the nose cone mounting. I mean, saying that Starship SNA testing schedule is fast-paced is a very serious understatement. And SpaceX team is doing literally everything they can to ramp that up even more. Well, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that, that our rate of innovation increases, it does not decrease. This is really essential. In fact, if we do not see 
something close to an exponential improvement in our rate of innovation, we will not reach Mars. Like a pure linear, doesn't get there. I'll be dead anyway before it gets there. And the next day, the rate of innovation definitely did not slow down at Boca Chica. As usual, the night was pretty busy for SpaceX team and early Wednesday morning, around 5 am, we had a visual confirmation that the Tangzilla, the large crane that's gonna be used for this stacking, is on the move heading towards the launch site. Meanwhile, at 8 am, the freshly stacked nose cone was still waiting for a ride as Mary tweeted out the picture and again, you can see the old MK1 nose cone in the background. And about 2 hours later at 8 am, the time has come for the nose cone to relocate to its final destination before mating, which is the launch pad. You can see the rollout here on NASA spaceflight stream and what a great sight. But I wanna show you something even more amazing. Austin Barna tweeted a video of the nose cone rollout and just look at it, it's just unbelievable. I could watch that on repeat over and over. Actually I dared to upscale the video so we can see more detail there, but all credit goes to Austin of course, but I'm speechless. In fact, let, let's just see the video once more. Right now as I'm making this video, it's shortly after midnight October 22nd and we are in the middle of the closure window, but the nose cone is still right next to the ship and it's unclear whether the mating's gonna take a place tonight or later tomorrow. But because we are in the middle of the road closure, the best guess could be maybe this is a good opportunity for SpaceX to do some checks on the plumbing system of the nose cone and maybe carry out the mating in the morning, I don't know, what you think? Let me know down in the comment section below. Or just let me know that my video is completely outdated now because Starship SN8 is already finished. Which would make me super super happy because I just can't wait to see this beast up in the air. If you liked today's episode so far, please subscribe to my channel, hit the like button and leave a comment in the comment section down below. This kind of support won't cost you anything, but for me it makes all the difference. Thank you so much. Good old Nokia is about to build 4G network right on the moon. Do you remember Nokia? Yeah, the Finnish company once dominating mobile phone industry, making famously indestructible devices such as Nokia 3310, or maybe if you are old enough, you may even remember Nokia 5110, which was one of the first mobile phones to feature the game Snake. When I was a little kid, that was the sort of thing you would dream of. You could say that the company was not doing that great here on earth. At least not as great as 20 years ago. So they've decided to change their focus on the moon. They're building a 4G LTE communication network on the moon. And their customer is no other than NASA. Nokia is amongst 14 companies that are part of NASA's tipping point awards that were recently announced. SpaceX is one of them, receiving 53.2 million for demonstration of the fuel transfer system on Starship and the largest portion of the total 370 millions that NASA plans to invest goes to Lockheed Martin and United Launch Alliance, receiving 89.7 and 86.2 million respectively. But what about Nokia? They were awarded 14.1 million dollars. So while building 4G network on the moon is certainly great achievement, you're not gonna become exactly Apple rich from it. But still, 14.1 million dollars should be just enough to build the first LTE 4G communication system in space. Nokia said it was selected by NASA to deploy an ultra-compact, low-power, space-hardened wireless 4G network on lunar surface as part of NASA's plan to establish long-term human presence on the moon by 2030. But how are they gonna install the necessary hardware? The network equipment will be installed remotely on the moon's surface using Lunar Hopper built by company Intuitive Machines in late 2022. Now you might say, hey, that's all great, but hey, it's 2020 and they talking about 4G, why not to go 5G? Well, Nokia said this uh, space hardened 4G network indeed can be updated to super fast 5G in the future. I guess if NAS asks or uh, more importantly, if they gonna drop some more cash. Okay, that's all I have for this episode. If you like the content I do, 
please make sure to subscribe, hit the like button and also click on the notification bell so you're gonna receive update each time I upload new episode. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.